Good morning and welcome to Sonoma United Methodist Church, where all are welcome. I'm Pastor Marie, and as always, I'm so excited that you joined our worship service this morning. I pray that all of you had a joyous Christmas celebration. I want to remind you uh, to stay muted until uh, a certain point in our service. We are going to uh, share our joys and concerns live. So uh, with our technology, um, it will be important that you stay muted until the appropriate time. Our call to worship this morning comes from our hymnal, number 857. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The, the Lord, Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And, and your, your faithful, faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And, and tell of, of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And, and the, the glorious, glorious splendor of your, your kingdom. kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And, and your, your dominion, dominion endures throughout all generations. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is, O Come All Ye Faithful. And we will sing the first two verses. And now we quickly come to the time in our service where we share our joys. Again, this Sunday, we are going to try uh, sharing live, if you will. So uh, please stay muted until uh, it is your time to share your joy. I will begin by saying, even though uh, the last week has been very difficult, I thoroughly enjoyed my Christmas day uh, with my son and I'm so grateful for all of the wonderful gifts that I was given from this wonderful church family. I was so excited on Christmas morning and uh, I just thankful for all of you. So for this joy of a wonderful Christmas inside of us, we say thanks be to God. Other joy. Uh, Bobby, un uh, unmute. I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Um, the joy was my um, Sierra and Roni and the baby came up unannounced and uh, on Christmas Day <laughs> and just showed up at the door. So uh, 
they are in our group, so we didn't expect it. And it was a delight to have them for a couple of days. For this joy, we say, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Heather Joy. You may also uh, type your joys in the chat as well. Any other joy? Charlene, unmute. This year I made the decision to stay home alone, but my children and I Zoomed back and forth and it was so delightful to see how each in their own homes are carrying on all of our traditions. So I was able to focus on that and not feel sorry for myself and really enjoy the season. It was great. For the joy of new traditions and the wonder of technology. For this joy, we say, thanks be to God. Heather Joyce. If you have a joy, just unmute yourself. So um, we too had uh, sharing on Zoom with our family, um, one with Scott's mother and his sister and our niece in San Jose, which was just wonderful. We opened presents at the same time with them. So that was really fun. And then yesterday we got together with my two brothers and their significant others and had a hilarious uh, time with them yesterday morning. It, it was great to see faces instead of just talking on the phone, for sure. For the joy of gathering at Christmas, for this we say, thanks be to God. Joanne. Well, um, we went for a walk yesterday with my uh, nephew, Gabriel, uh, who's 41 or so, and his mom, my sister, and it was wonderful just walking around the neighborhood. And so I was really grateful for that. And thanks be to God. Amen. For the joy of nature and just getting outdoors. For this, we say thanks, thanks be to God. God. Hillary. Uh, I think I just have a general joy of community and everyone surrounding us, all the little angels that pop up your way, whether you're having a hard day or not. Since the holidays, I've moved into a trailer uh, on Grandma Frank's property, so I'm staying early, and I've just been so blessed, particularly with, with Cameron and Frank and his family and all the signs of support that they've given me, so I'm incredibly appreciative and have this overwhelming joy of community. For this. We say, thanks be to God. We will take maybe one or two more joys. Joanne. I should have said it before, but I was so grateful to hear the children on Wednesday, uh, not Wednesday night, uh, Thursday night, Christmas Eve, speak to us about uh, their knowing about Christmas. It was wonderful. For the blessing of having children participate in the service and share their wisdom. For this joy, we say thanks be to God. I will ask that you continue to share your joys with one another throughout this week, either by phone or text or however you want to do it, but continue to share your joys because it is 
the remembering and sharing of our joys that will sustain us when we are struggling. At this time, we will go to our prayers and concerns. Um, I want us to uh, be mindful that, uh, or remember, I should say that there is power in prayer. Your friends here at Sonoma United Methodist Church uh, would like to be in prayer with you. And so we ask, even if you don't share your concern out loud, uh, that while you're at home, you lift up the names of those that you are concerned about, uh, things that are going on in the community, and know that your pastor and this church is in prayer with you. Uh, this morning, we would like to remember uh, the following in prayer. For prayers of healing, we continue to lift up Rich Hacker, Jean Hoffman, Frank Wines, Carol Winternitz, Loretta Thomas, Kevin Johnson, Ruth Hoagland, Jeff Severson, and my cousin, Cynthia Winthrop of Georgia, who has been hospitalized. We're also lifting up all bereaved families, essential workers, uh, particularly those in hospitals and skilled nursing facilities, those who are without food and shelter. And at this time, uh, before um, we take other prayer requests, let us center ourselves before God. Uh, our centering song this morning is Star Child. Amen. 
And now we will take prayer requests. Uh, first, we'll start. Are there any prayer requests that are in the chat? Yes, there are. Um, one second. Erin writes, um, her friend Kenny is battling leukemia. Deb, her daughter Erin has been diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Erin, uh, her husband's step niece, Ashley is battling with cancer. Uh, a joy, uh, uh, wonderful to see the Rollins this morning. Um, that just got typed in. And Bobby writes that her daughter Dana and and her son her grandson Christian have been diagnosed with COVID in Mexico. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayer requests. And um, Jean Kilgore needs our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Joy. For my sister, Rosemary, who's having a breast biopsy on January 4th, and for Vida from Congregational Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Susan. Susan. Uh, Scott and I drove up the uh, Silverado Trail last week, uh, north up towards Calistoga, and we hadn't been up there since the fires in the fall, and they are just in the midst of huge cleanup, um, and we forget uh, that there's still lots of people suffering from those most recent fires because out of sight, out of mind, but it's a horrible mess up there. It was unbelievable, the devastation, and we just need to keep all those people in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other requests? Jean? Uh, please keep the family of Helen Fernandez in your prayers. Helen passed away a week ago, Wednesday, and many of you know her, she's a legend in Sonoma. <clears throat> She'd been ill for like six months and her son, Manny, um, uh, was particularly close to her and she has lots of friends. So please keep Helen Fernandez family in your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayer requests, you may type them in the chat or you may speak them aloud. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any more. Thank you. And now let us go to the throne of grace. Loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather to both share our joys, as well as the many concerns that have been lifted up. What a challenging year this has been. But even with all of the things that we're lifting up this morning, we are still able to say thank you for the many things that you have done for us and provided for us. You've heard all of the names that have been lifted up and you, knew about these situations even before we uttered them for all of the prayers that are in hearts this morning and for all of the silent tears that continue to fall. Lord, have mercy on us. Be with those who need healing. Be with those who are transitioning and be with those who struggle with feeling helpless and not knowing what to do. We're grateful this morning that no matter what our situations look like, that you are indeed with us. And this gives us great joy this morning. Lord, 
And please hear and answer our prayers as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Be encouraged, sisters and brothers. As I say each week, there is indeed power in prayer. At this uh, point in our service, we will go to our scripture lesson it's a little, it's a lengthy one. It comes from Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 22 through 40. And it reads, when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. That is, it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own side. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and with the favor of God upon him. This, brothers and sisters, this is the word of life. Thanks be to God. This morning, we are in for a treat. We have a special musical selection by my son, Neil Wade.
can walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know Thanks. that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels tried. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Maybe did you know that your baby boy Same. is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding, he is the great I am. Oh, Mary, did you know Amen. Amen. One of my favorite songs and just a blessing to have my son in worship with us this morning. Well, today is the last Sunday of 2020. <laughs> Woo. I am sure that most of us cannot wait for it to be over. But usually at the end of the year, uh, it prompts us to reflect on the year that has passed and to think about what we would like to experience in the year to come. Many of us begin this process of releasing the old and embracing the new by making lists. I have a lot of lists. Lists that include what we will do differently, or in layman's terms, we make resolutions. In 2019, here were the top 10 resolutions. Number one, eat healthier. Number two, exercise more. Three, save money or spend less. Four, learn something new. And number five doesn't relate to anyone I know in here, but quit smoking. Number six, read more. Seven, change jobs. Num number eight, again, doesn't apply to anyone here, drink less. Number nine, spend more time with family and friends. And number 10, get organized. Now, do any of these sound familiar? We often get off to a great start, don't we? And then somehow we lose interest, life happens, or we just give up. If we could only just believe that whatever we set out to do, we can absolutely accomplish. Our lesson this morning 
tells the story of a man named Simeon, who too had something on his list to accomplish. The difference is that this list was not something that he was committing to do because it was the new year, but something that was more of, his list was more of a bucket list, if you will. You see, Simeon was waiting on a promise from God that the Holy Spirit had revealed to him. The experience that he was waiting to have was to see the Lord's Messiah. Now, if Simeon had literally written a bucket list, seeing the Son of God would probably be number one on that list. And that first thing, or maybe even the only thing on the list, was also one that most folks would probably think would not happen. Even so, Simeon was told that it would. All he had to do was just believe. Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, as we consider your promises for our lives, help us to remember that all things are possible if we just believe. This we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I know this might seem an odd question to be asking. But what is the one thing that you would like to see or do or experience while you still have time? Is there anything you would like to accomplish? Anything you would like to experience? How about starting your own business? How about riding a horse? I don't want to, I want to do that. Zip lining? meeting your favorite actor or actress? What excites you and gives you chills all at the same time when you think about it? I imagine some of you may be thinking, well, for the things I'm thinking about, it's too late. Time has passed by. But our lesson this morning is proof that it is never too late if you just believe while we're not quite sure of his age, I gather that Simeon is an old man. The text tells us that he was righteous and devout. In other words, he was faithful to the Lord. And when he gets to the temple and sees Joseph and Mary with the baby Jesus, he takes the baby in his arms and praises God. I can't imagine what Simeon must have been thinking as he held what he knew without a shadow of a doubt was the Messiah. I do know, however, the excitement of holding a newborn baby. They're so small and cute and precious and often remind us that in that new life that we hold, there is hope. In Simeon's case, this new life that he was holding allowed him to find peace. Peace that he had been searching for for decades. What would give you peace this morning? The clock is ticking on 2020, but you do not have to wait for 2021 to arrive before you experience the peace that you've been searching for. All you have to do is just believe. Joseph and Mary in verse 33 are amazed at what is happening. And I'm always amazed that they were amazed because it's like you knew, Mary, what God had promised you. But the reality is there was only so much she knew so much Joseph knew. We don't know everything at once. The only thing that they expected to happen that day was that their baby would be dedicated in the temple, as was the Jewish custom. Instead, they were greeted by an old man who was thrilled to see and hold their baby. 
He even prophesies about things to come. I imagine that they were more than just surprised, but overwhelmed at what they heard. Like Simeon, until the prophetic things that were told to them that day came to pass, they would have to just believe that what they were being told will in fact come true. This narrative gets even more interesting because there was another prophet, or should I say prophetess, at the temple. Her name was Anna. And we don't have to guess her age. Verse 36 tells us that she was of great age as she lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow for 84 years after that. We're told that she never left the temple and that she worshiped with fasting night and day. She too was faithful. And it was quite clear that Anna too had been given a, a promise by God. Anna was able to see one whom God had sent to redeem Israel. And she had the pleasure, the awesome pleasure of telling all who came to the temple that day who this special child was. What an honor this must have been for this old woman. The lesson for us today is that while we continue to live in times of instant gratification, God's timing looks nothing like our timekeeping. You may have let go of a dream or peace because it didn't happen the way you expected it or as quickly as you wanted it to. But at some point in this journey called life, we get to a place where all that is required of us is to just believe. What are you believing God for in 2021? When we celebrate the story of Jesus' birth at Christmas, we're in essence saying that we trust God and that we trust God's love for us that was shown through Jesus Christ. God came to earth to dwell with us. Now, this does not mean we are perfect or that we won't make mistakes or we won't struggle. We may not have the ability to know and understand everything that happens, what goes on in the world around us. But if we are faithful and just believe, we can see the face of God. Hey, wait a minute. That's it. Instead of making a long list of resolutions, maybe we should just redo or create a bucket list. And number one on that list should be see the face of God. And you may be thinking, I thought zip lining was going to be something, but to see the face of God, how's that going to happen? Well, if you just believe, you will see God in small acts of kindness, a surprise visit, a sunrise, a sunset, a walk in nature where the birds are singing, and let us not forget, in the eyes of a newborn baby. Sisters and brothers, what are you trusting God for today? As we watch the last days of 2020 pass by us, be careful, really careful not to rush the experience. If we have learned anything this year, it should be that we do not have the control over our lives that we thought we had. And the busyness that has become customary to our experience as human beings has kept us from embracing and enjoying the experience of 
the here and the now. How many times this year have we said, if I only knew I would have, since we don't know what will happen moment to moment, it is best that we trust God to give us what we need from day to day. Like Simeon and Anna, we must be faithful and just believe. As I close this morning, may I suggest that you take time to remember to live in the present and just believe God to work out the rest. Emmanuel, God with us. Just a few days ago, we sang that God does dwell among us so that we can truly live. Our lesson this morning ends with verse 40 that says the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God was with him. Kind of an odd way to end the rest of the story remains to be seen. For Joseph and Mary, what they would experience as parents of the Messiah and how Jesus would redeem Jerusalem and all of the stories that we know would not come to pass that day, even though they were told that it would happen. I'll say that again. Everything that they had been promised did not happen in an instant, but eventually they had to believe that what God had revealed to them would materialize in God's time. As long as we are here on earth, our stories are still being written moment by moment and day by day. Do not rush the process. Just do all that you can to just believe. Amen. And now it is offering time. Time where we are grateful for all of the gifts that we are are able to give to this ministry, but also for all of the gifts that we're able to, to receive. Thank you for keeping your tithes and offerings, your gifts current, and doing the best that you can in this financially difficult season. If you have not had the opportunity to get your offering in this week, you may do so online at SonomaUMC.com. And remember, friends who may be visiting, if you would like to donate to our ministry, you may do so online. Let us take time to give thanks for all of the gifts that we're able to give, as well as the gifts that we receive. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for these gifts that we were able to give. Bless those who gave and bless those who desired to give but just did not have the means. And this morning, our giving is in faith. Help us to just believe that you will take these gifts and multiply them, triple multiply them for the benefit of your kingdom. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
our closing hymn this morning is also probably very familiar. It is Angels We Have Heard on High. Descant. Our announcements this morning are as follows. Again, this Thursday, I know you're so sad. There will be no Thoughtful Thursday because last week it was Christmas Eve and this week is New Year's Eve. But we will begin a book study in mid-January, so get excited and stay tuned for more information. Uh, this coming Tuesday will be the all-church meeting to discuss the church's response to a hate crime that occurred at Asbury United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C. This is postponed from last Tuesday. It will be at 5 o'clock, and all church leaders and church members are encouraged to attend. The link for this important discussion will go out tomorrow. Next Sunday, get excited is our first drive-by communion of the new year. Uh, it will begin after our morning worship and because we're streaming live, it, it will begin at uh, 11.30 and end approximately at 12.45. So please come out and receive a new year's gift from your pastor. I know you're excited about that. I'm sure that the link for signups will go out as well this week. Please keep in mind all 
of the opportunities for ministry that we have here at Sonoma UMC, and they continue to grow uh, to include, and I'm just naming a few, uh, the dynamic garden crew that meets on Tuesdays, our spiritual action group, our prayer shawl ministry, the mighty men of God's group, parish partners, and the prayer chain. And again, this is just to name a few. So consider how you might share your gifts and talents with the church and community. You might want to put join a prayer ministry on your bucket list. Uh, do not forget to turn in your pledge cards for 2021. Whatever you're able to give, uh, God will multiply for use to support our ministry and the community that we serve. Uh, thanks again to all of you who blessed your pastor with wonderful Christmas gifts. Your thoughtfulness did not go unnoticed. And last but certainly not least, I always like to thank our worship team, our praise team, stream team, musicians, and our special musical guest, my son, Neil, uh, participating in this morning's worship service. And a welcome back to Leah, our flautist, who has been away, but we're glad to have her this morning and again all in the direction of Jim McFadden, our musical director. Amen. At this time, I always hate to say that. It seems like it goes by so fast, but this concludes our worship service this morning. Again, I hope that something was said or done uh, that will encourage you uh, as we leave, say goodbye to 2020 and move into the new year of 2021. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Until we meet again, remember to love one another and just believe. Go in peace. See you next week and happy new year. <laughs>